Everybody loves a good villain, from Joker to Sephiroth to your friend from high school who recently got involved in NFTs. But everyone fails to talk about the greatest antagonist of all, Adam Sandler in 50 First Dates. I recently watched the movie and I have a lot to say about it. It starts off with just highlights of his egregious sex life featuring, I counted, nine women and Kevin James. They all recap their experience with him and it's the comedy, but it's the first scene, and all he's done is establish how shitty he is to women. And in the second scene, he showcases that he is a vet and immediately proceeds to perform on a human who is Rob Schneider, who is more man than beast at this point. And then there are children, they're filming it, and one asks what a nympho is, and this is not a rom-com at this point. I don't know why people think this. But Adam Sandler, Henry Roth, is a hero, so we have to showcase that. We have a sick animal, and he runs to their side, grabs a fish, abuses his female co-worker with it, and then that that animal vomits profusely onto his female co-worker, which you think that's just what happens in the business, huh? And then we peel behind the curtain a little bit and Adam Sandler prepped that animal. He poisoned this animal so they would vomit on this, this co-worker of his because she apparently stole his sandwich. That is not a joke. That sounds like a joke. There's a set up punchline and everything. Here's seven minutes into the movie and he has already done several bad things. He risked the life of a walrus to be vindictive against his co-worker over a roast beef sandwich. Pretty much his all MO is that he lives in Hawaii, makes women fall in love with him who are tourists, and then comes up with a creative excuse why he can't be with them. And he's the hero of the story. Then we introduce the first major plot hole. He goes to his favorite diner, which Drew Barrymore is conveniently at. He meets Drew Barrymore, he hits on her, she's making a waffle teepee like their Lincoln Logs. There are no heroes in the story. He comes over, puts all of his hands on his food, move on, it's a new day. He's at work. His female coworker, who he has already abused multiple times, is now throwing herself at him. Don't know why, but when she makes an offer to strip down, give him the what's what. He says, I'm not into guys. But Kevin James seems to differ. When Adam Sandler walks over and puts all of his hands on her food, she reacts positively. And then he says, ah, oh, sorry, my hands smell like vomit. And she goes, I love that smell. So then Adam Sandler did what any normal guy does in this situation and asks if she wants to smell his hands. So we're just gonna fast forward to the next scene. Now Adam Sandler is golfing with Rob Schneider, who as a homie gives him a number of a hot blonde tourist who needs a tour guide. Then he insists that he shows her the Waikiki Sneaky between the cheekies. As if to say, you haven't experienced Hawaii until you've had anal sex. Hard cut, despite everything he said, he still goes on a date. And he's essentially like at the Rainforest Cafe, the girl downs a fishbowl margarita, and against her will, he insists she orders another one. In this moment, he realizes that he doesn't want to sleep with a nameless bimbo. He doesn't want to sleep with any random women, so he admits to what he's been doing the whole time. Sleeps with constant amounts of women by giving them copious amounts of fake alcohol in order to make them feel drunk as a placebo effect. He sugar pills them while still retaining consent from these drunk women. He admits to it, yet somehow shows zero guilt. And as he gets up to leave, he calls his co-worker a man and insults the woman. You're too drunk to notice, remember? Hard cut, new day. We learn the truth about Drew Barrymore. She has amnesia, and Adam Sandler is a pervert. She's finally figuring it out. So now, his goal shifts from a second date to 51st dates. We learn about her traumatic pineapple-related experience and how she got a concussion, and now every day is the same day. Adam Sandler feels lied to after learning the truth, and he responds and says, this is something I would make up to tell a crazy woman, which, it's so telling. This is the character we're supposed to cheer for. We get to learn more about her personal life. Her dad makes sure she lives the same day every day and her brother helps. And she repaints the entire garage. They watch the same football game. They watch the same movie. And this life sounds like hell. I mean, at this point, I would just toss her a bad day every now and then. How is she gonna remember? Personally, I think they overcomplicate this process by far. If I was stuck with the amnesia-ridden daughter, Actually, I'm not finishing that sentence. It's a new day, we're at the diner again. Adam Sandler, the love interest of the story, makes a bet with the chef that he can make her fall in love with him again for $20. That's what this means to him. Naturally, he tries the same thing as last time, doesn't work. So they do double or nothing, and it doesn't work. The movie opened with just how awful he was to women, and now it's trying to show how romantic he is. But I think all this proves that shitty men just love a challenge. He puts water in his eyes, pretends to cry, and then fakes being illiterate for her to talk to him. And it works. It's a little pathetic, but it works. And by this, I mean emotional manipulation. 
So pretty much despite coming clean to that one blonde girl about all of his tricks and everything, he's just proved that he's learned nothing so far. Yes, she has amnesia, but no, she's not stupid. She sees through this, she roasts him, and then he goes to her house, which I don't know how he figured that one out, but her dad pretty much says, hey, we see what you're doing, don't. Just promise you're not gonna mess with what we got going, you're never gonna see her again. He may have accepted that he won't go to the diner again, but he didn't say that he wasn't gonna stalk her. She takes the same trip every single day. He knows her entire routing. So naturally, he starts pulling out major shenanigans and just pretends to be in a broken down car and needs assistance, which it's like, doesn't he have a job? Doesn't he have any other priority to do? This is a lot to emotionally manipulate one girl. We now have a montage of all of his antics, and this one is involves construction. This one has outfits. He even puts a penguin's life in danger, and it almost dies. It should have died. I mean, I don't want it to die, but like it looked like it was going to. And then he pretends to get mugged by Rob Schneider, and then Drew Barrymore proceeds to beat the shit out of Rob Schneider. Like a lot. And he doesn't care. Because in his mind, this is a win. Drew Barrymore fell for it. <laughs> and now it's like day six of bullshit. And he's roped up in the back of his car, which he just did half the work for someone very opportunistic. And then her dad drives by, and you know where this is going. He actually kind of likes Adam Sandler now. He realizes that all the days she meets him, she sings. And it's a little pitchy. Every kiss was now! It's a new day, he's sitting on her, and he strikes out. She pulls a fake boyfriend story, and then Adam Sandler decides to push. What's his name? How long have you guys been dating? What do you know about? But before he can be put on a list, she rushes outside because her car got a ticket. Her plates are expired, and somehow that is the climax of the film. Given the whole amnesia thing, obviously she hasn't renewed her plates or anything, and then it all spirals downhill from there. The dad and brother feel like they've lost. They reveal everything to her, and this moment is very vulnerable for the whole family. And it just feels so dramatic, but in reality, she's just gonna forget tomorrow. Drew Barrymore wants to get confirmation from the hospital, and somehow Adam Sandler slides in and goes with them. They're all having very emotional talks about what they've been through in the past year, and then Adam Sandler just sneaks in that he wants to have sex with her. They make it to the doctors and get confirmation. It is permanent. And then they say, nah, it could be worse. And introduce her to 10 Second Tom. It was in an accident? That's terrible. Don't worry, you'll totally get over it in about three seconds. Get over it? I mean, what happened? Did I get shot in the brain? I... Hi, I'm Tom. This film's fucked. Her dad apparently likes Adam Sandler now, and he kind of mentions that he has big plans on leaving one day, and they're unsure about how it's gonna impact Drew Barrymore. And then he reads her medical records. And, uh, oh, uh, no, he's just stealing them, okay. <laughs> It's a new day. He has a VHS tape in hand and a plan. And he wakes her up as a stranger and reintroduces her to the whole world. After catching her up on everything, he now has to focus on himself. And Rob Schneider is supposed to be funny, but is very horny and sexual in this. Oh, come on, stop with the licking, you're making me <laughs> sick. She laughs. But when you really think about the situation, why would she? And then they remind her that her mom's dead. Your mother and I were best friends. <laughs> That's why I promised her that I would always help look after you. And after that, she has probably the most normal day she's had in like a year. She catches up with all of her friends, introduces them to Adam Sandler, and then they have a nice walk on the beach where she asks if he loves her. Which, bitch, it's been like a week for him. But he says yes, and then they go on a montage showing 50 first kisses. But before that, we stop at the 23rd where he tries to cop a field. But when she notices that he's going for a field ski, he says, and I quote, this is like the 23rd time we've made out already, and they're getting blue. So he's pressuring her into sex now. It's her first time, but he's 23rd. So he says, and again I quote, let's average it out. And it's like the 12th date, and I am entitled to unlimited boob action. So then he takes her to the aquarium where he works at and asks the walruses if they should have sex. Like, and this is another use of him using the walruses for personal gain. And then on the 23rd date, they have sex with the dolphins watching. Fast forward a few minutes, which is a plot point, and Adam Sandler is playing some post-coitus guitar. Apparently he wrote a song about her traumatic brain injury and her fat ass. Got a nice cup of and they say romance is dead. They have a nice night, they fall asleep together, and for her, that's probably the scariest thing that can happen. It is the same thing as you waking up next to Adam Sandler tomorrow morning and him trying to explain why. No, 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 don't you remember me a little? She kicks his ass, the doctor comes over, and Adam Sandler insists that she's made progress even though medically she can't. And Drew Barrymore's character at this point has written a diary every single day just to jog her mint world to remind herself what's happened every single day since the injury. So she kind of realizes that she's inconveniencing Adam Sandler's journey and all of his days by just existing. So she makes a note to break up with him. 
And this is sad, you know? Like, this is the low point of the movie, but I understand where she's coming from. And then Adam Sandler just kind of sits back and goes, You think you can stop me? Which is terrifying. I... It's at this point where I question how the fuck this is a rom-com. So despite being a dick about it all, he kindly rewrites her entire journal for her and removes him from every single detail. And if this was a normal relationship, it would probably end here. But given that it is actually a rom-com, they kiss in the rain. And then she forgets everything. It's a new day, and we're officially back to the start. Given her daily brainwash, it's, it's really as if nothing's happened at all. We watch a sad montage about how different all their lives are now, and Adam Saylor decides to go set sail and hang out with walruses or something. But before he does that, Drew Barrymore's character, who's Lucy, I haven't mentioned that yet, uh, her dad comes out and says, yeah, she's in a mental institute now. Good luck on the boat. Hard cut, he's on the boat. And screaming the Beach Boys. And then goes against Lucy's wishes and crashes the mental institute. She's, a, she's teaching an art class and he has to be there. It's the perfect romantic moment. He comes to her at her moment of, well, not so much need, but she, he just says, do you remember me? And she says no, which makes sense because she, you know. But because this is a rom-com, she reveals that despite her brain not working, for some reason it is a little bit, and she has all these paintings of him. And they kiss, and then they get married. And I think it's hilarious that all the producers had to get so much art commission of none other than Adam Sandler. And as you'd expect, given the climax of the story, after they kiss, it hard cuts and she's trapped on a boat in Alaska with the VHS tape, which is probably the most terrifying. Like, this is no different than you waking up with this same information. So she's watching the VHS tape. They're married. She was pregnant. They have a kid now. And, best of all, she's trapped in Alaska. This is the end of the film. She could have been trapped anywhere, but she is now trapped in the one place she can't escape. Not just a boat, but a boat in Alaska. And if that, that wasn't enough, my theory of this whole movie being a sadistic twist of kidnapping an adult woman, it, it's just confirmed with the credit song being the police's every breath you take. So the lyrics that say every breath you take, every move you make, every bond you break, every step you take, I'll be watching you. This is a horror film. Wait. There's no alcohol in these drinks. It helps lovely tourists such as yourself stay awake all night and have guilt-free, vigorous sex with me. Are you staring at me or her? Because you're starting to freak me out. Settle down and eat your pancakes, huh? About a year ago, Lucy was in a terrible car accident. She lost her short-term memory. So she can't remember anything? Her slate gets wiped clean every night while she sleeps. I think he's more than my friend. You're my boyfriend, right? Yes, ma'am. I'll read what I wrote about you. I will read about it tomorrow. Let me forget about all this breaking up stuff, okay? I really had to do this on a boat, huh? <laughs> <laughs>